how to start a food truck business in Louisiana, and what are the steps to starting a food truck business? Well, in this video from Food Truck Freaks, YouTube's premier food truck entrepreneur channel, we are gonna dive into the steps, and I'm gonna tell you something. You're gonna wanna listen to this from beginning to end, because I'm gonna break down every step that you need to take to be successful starting a food truck in Louisiana. All right, guys, so welcome back to Food Truck Freaks. This is YouTube's premier food truck entrepreneur channel. It is Damien Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online, which is our really big food entrepreneur channel here on YouTube. We've actually got four different channels dedicated to different food industries. If you're interested in finding out more about those, check the links down below. But I'm gonna go break it down step by step. Now, this is in no particular step, no order. I'm actually just gonna give you the things you need to do in order for you to get your food truck up and running in Louisiana. Louisiana is actually one of the fastest growing states for the food truck industry and many food trucks are opening literally week in and week out. So if you're interested in starting one, you definitely wanna pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. And if you can't listen to this entire video in, in its entirety, definitely pause it, subscribe to our channel, come back and you can watch the rest of it as you need. So let's get started. Number one, food truck registration as a commercial vehicle operator. So many parts, many cities and counties within Louisiana will require you to actually register your food truck as a commercial vehicle because it's technically looked at as a business for commercial use. Um, so it's not something you can get similar to like a home based, like a, a pickup truck or a car that you've got at home. The type of registration you'll need is gonna be a commercial vehicle registration. So keep that in mind as well. Next up, each municipality, city and county that you operate in, you also may need to actually have a business license in each city or county. Now, the reason why I say that is most states across the board, when they see a food truck and you go from one county county line to the next to the next, and you're operating your actual business there, they're gonna see that as revenue for their city or county. So potentially you might even need to collect taxes actually for that county specifically you're operating in. That's really what's unique about mobile food businesses is that very fact that every city, county will require a type of business license for you to operate in. I believe there's one state in the United States that allows you to do the entire state. I'll have to find out exactly what state that is, but I read somewhere that only one state you can do Register once and you're good to go. You don't have to keep doing it in city accounting. So next up, open a business account for your food truck business. Now, keep in mind that a food truck is a full-blown business and having a separate bank account dedicated to the business is a really must, a really big must. Because mixing your personal account with your business account is something in the food truck industry you don't want to necessarily do because it gets confusing when it comes to the tax time, okay, tax preparation. When you go to your accountant, they want to see separation of your personal and business expenses and such. There's a lot of other businesses you can operate that are different than that. But when it comes to a food truck, make sure that you get a business account. Next up, a taxpayer's ID for your business. Now, I believe this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually called an EIN. That's an employer identification number. Taxpayer's ID is something that you want to set up for the food truck separately because that will allow you at the end of the year to uh, file your taxes with the IRS and ensure that the taxes are properly handled because your business will have its own ID number. Well, next up, you want to market research the area. So you want to check out the area that you want to open your food truck. Believe it or not, there may or may not be already existing food trucks in your demographic, in your area. Okay, If your city or county has multiple taco trucks, for instance, and you find out, you know, hey, I've, got, I've went to a few food truck events, I'm gonna not gonna open another taco truck because trying to find a type of food that would do really well in your specific area that will sell successfully, you don't wanna double up or even triple up on the type of cuisine or food that's offered already because that really just doesn't give you a competitive advantage, okay? So you wanna do a little bit of market research. All right, so next up, you wanna check your experience. Now, this may sound a little odd, but a lot of Food truck entrepreneurs see a food truck as this kind of a glamorous, fun, exciting, which it is in some way, shape or form, uh, business to start. It sounds like it's a lot of fun to do and it's great creating food and such, but if you don't have a lot of experience preparing food, maybe you have worked in a restaurant, but you are not exactly a chef. Maybe you don't have any culinary training, but double check your own experience. See for sure that you have the abilities and skills to prepare food on a food truck on a regular basis, day in and day out, okay? Next up, the food truck business name. You actually need to check and verify that the name of the food truck you want to do is not taken. The name is not taken. So you can actually check this through your state's website, your state's business website, Louisiana state website. You could do a name search check, but make sure that you obviously do that before you apply for the business license because that is something you need to make sure it's not already taken. Next up, you have to register your business and get your business license in the city or county you're going to operate in. No-brainer, of course, right? 
But you want to make sure again, once you apply in that city or county, double check with them and say, hey, I'm going to cross over to this county or this city frequently. I'm going to be working there in some food truck events. Do I need to have a separate business license? So if you do, make sure you apply for that as well. Next up, securing a point of sale system hardware. So your POS, which is your point of sale system hardware. And you can get that, by the way, I'll have a lot of links so you guys know down below this video in the description section. If you're looking for POS systems, hardware and all that, merchant accounts and things, check down below. We've got a lot of resources to help you guys out as well. But a POS system hardware. So this will give you the ability to take debit and credit cards at any transaction. Um, a lot of food drug operators, when they first start, they're like, you know what, I'm just going to do cash for whatever their personal reasons are. But not everybody always has cash on them, and you could potentially lose sales if you don't have a POS system. Now, next up to that is actually the POS merchant account. So having the system and hardware is one thing. Okay, that has nothing to do with the actual account, merchant account that you're going to set up, because you need a company that can transact those transactions for you. So having the hardware is really not going to cut it. You need to have a merchant account. So ensure that you do that as well. Food handler certificate. Now, most cities and counties for mobile food business, actually in general, if it's a, um, a food trailer, a food cart, even a food truck, have to have a food handler certificate. And it's very simple to get these. Um, the course, you take a course, you learn basically how to prepare the food, store it, sanitize your equipment, keep it clean. It's a lot of, honestly, a lot of common sense but you need to have that certification. And if you do uh, operate a vehicle, a food truck with additional employees, many times those employees too will have to have a food handler certificate. All right, so next up, the financial end of it. You have to generate funds for your food truck business. Now, this can come in the form of maybe even using your own credit cards, your own personal funds, even a 401k account if you wanted to go that route, family and friends, um, whoever it is, or even a business partner, somebody that's going to go into the food truck business with you, maybe they're going to be the funding part and you're going to be the backbone, the, the, the chef, the cook, the guy that makes the food. Whatever it may be, you're going to need funds. You need to figure out how to get them. All right, next up, you need to have the right driver's license. Yes, cities and counties, again, vary on what type of license they will require. Most of them, believe it or not, will have to have a commercial truck license, okay? Not necessarily these big 18 wheelers types of trucks, uh, certain classes that they have for 18 wheelers and such, but you may have to have a commercial truck license. So double check with a DMV on the type of license you'll need to have. Next up, design a food truck logo for your brand. Now guys, if you're going to create a food truck in any type of business, of course, you need to have a logo. Sit down and brainstorm. If you need help designing one, you can check the Fiverr links down below this video. Fiverr is a great website where you can actually pay someone anywhere from 50 to even hundred bucks, very simple to get a logo created to get you up and running with your brand. But that is something too you need to think about. Next up, create a simple employee handbook for your employees. Now, why would I have to go through all of that, Damien? I could just show somebody what to do. The more thorough you are, the better off it is as far as your work relationship with your employees. The more specific as to what their responsibilities are going to be on your food truck, helping you build your food business, the better off you'll be. And a simple handbook doesn't, you don't have to sit there and write a 700 page book, guys. You can make it simple as to what's expected for cleaning, what's expected for sanitation, being on time. Um, if you have a certain license, making sure that they have a valid license and keeping that valid. I mean, there's a lot of real simple things you could put in an employee handbook, but definitely create one. It's gonna benefit you big time. Next up, food truck insurance policy. So with your food truck business comes, of course, risks, like with any other type of business. So you will have to have a food truck insurance policy. They Now, I've heard they run anywhere from about six to seven or even 800 on the low end to about 1,200 a year. So you definitely need to have one. But a food truck insurance policy is next on our list. Now, next up, if you've got a office, if you're operating an office somewhere and you need to furnish it, you need to have office equipment, maybe even copiers, printers, laptops, phone line, be sure to make sure that you've got everything you need because it, setting that up too is a huge ex, a business write-off for you, by the way. Even if it's a small little business office, it doesn't have to be too big, where you it's kind of your headquarters, if you will, the business side of your food truck. Be sure to set that up and any expenses that you pay for office furniture, phone bills, phones, faxes, whatever it is that you're using, okay? That's all potentially could be written off uh, for your accountant, so you need to be aware of that too. Next up, you can actually apply for bank loans. Even though, yes, believe it or not, even though the food truck hasn't up and running yet or generated funds or sales, many uh, branches of different types of, of commercial loans through banks and such, even credit unions, are now being lent to food trucks because it's become a huge industry. So double check to make sure that you uh, can get the funding if you don't have it through some type of bank loan. Next up, your truck needs to be wrapped. 
What is a food truck wrap, Damien? Well, that's the exterior design of your food truck. That's where your logo, your branding, that's where everything that you do about the brand of your truck needs to be implemented and it needs to be wrapped on your truck. So in Louisiana, when you start your successful food truck business, you want to make sure that you get it wrapped, make it vibrant colors, eye-catching, maybe even the name of your, of course, the food truck itself, a logo, something branding. But keep in mind that you want it bright and vibrant. You want to get people's attention visually when you're at a food truck rally or food truck event. The only ones that stand out are the hugely bright, light colored, lit up ones. Okay. Now, do you have to have a lot of lights and things on the outside? No, not necessarily. You just want to make sure that the colors of the truck are eye catching and eye appealing. All right, guys, next up, we got just a few more here and you guys will know exactly what you need to get your food truck started in Louisiana. So the next thing you need to know is you're going to need to get a chef. Now, I know that you may be the head chef, you may be the one running the show, but keep in mind this. If you happen to get sick or ill or on a weekend, you got a big event and you don't, you don't have a, a chef, you don't have someone who can cook like you do, or you don't have someone else on your right-hand man who can pick up the slack if you're sick or ill one time and you're going to miss out on an event on the weekend, don't do that. Make sure you have a chef or you have someone that you can hire or even train yourself. But having a second backup is a good thing to do. And of course, next up, you need to get your food truck. Okay. Now, obviously, Damien, why did I make a list? That's a common sense thing. Too many people think they have to buy a food truck. Did you know that you could rent or even lease to own a food truck? Yes, that is an option that you can do without putting out $100,000 out of your pocket. So renting, leasing a food truck is a concept that is catching on very, very fast in the food truck industry. You don't need to go out and buy one. So take a look at that as well. Next up, you need to get your smallware, your utensils, your culinary, your cutlery, the, the, the knives, the plastic silverware, the disposable napkins, the plates, everything, all the small wares you need. And keep that in mind as part of your budget when you launch, you're going to need a couple thousand dollars worth of those products, okay? And that's everything from even ketchup packets to uh, plastic disposable plates or paper plates. Whatever it is, you need to get your small wares. Next up, create a website. Yes, even though you're operating a food truck business, which is not an e-commerce business, Having a website gives your company val val validity. It gives your company a validation, if you will, that you're a legitimate business. Plus, down the road, when you start to sell merch, you remember we talked about your logo and talked about branding? There's a lot of food trucks, guys. I don't know if you're aware of this, but they make a lot of money outside of the food truck from their website with merch, like hats with their logo, sweaters, shirts, different types of products with their name and brand and logo on it because locally you're going to get a following and people are going to love your brand. And if you've got a really cool eye-catching logo, people are going to want to wear it, believe it or not. Yes. So having a website it can be developed into an e-commerce business, and you can generate additional streams of revenue from that. Next up, fire department inspection. Yes, you will have your food truck inspected by the fire department. Reason being is they're going to make sure that the propane tanks, your generators, your electrical outlets, your equipment, everything that's on the truck needs to be functioning properly without any potential for fire or risk to the people working. And of course, patrons. If you don't have a proper propane tank set up, for instance, for your generator and something happens, then that could potentially hurt a lot of people. So your fire department wants to make sure everything is checked out good. Create a menu, be specific about the type of food you want to serve and the beverages you will have. Okay, now keep in mind, this is a good idea to start with, but of course, menus are flexible. You're not always locked into one particular one, which is a great idea. If you enjoy cooking and you're great at making tacos and burritos and such, but you know what? During the summer or spring, maybe you sell more hamburgers and hot dogs. Don't always get stuck in a rut with your menu, but create a menu, create something that's unique, make it your own, and keep in mind that it's very flexible. Next up, documentation. Many counties and cities of food truck operators will require, guys, that you have your documentation and your information on your vehicle at all times. That would be inspections, uh, previous health inspections, for instance, uh, might be a fire inspection. Keep a copy of that, guys, in your truck. It's not that difficult to do. Have a file folder dedicated to that. Next up, maintain an inventory log. So this is beneficial for you as the business owner. You need to know what sells and what doesn't. You know, if you've brought in a bunch of inventory and you sell through it, you want to check that record. You want to keep that information, find out, hey, what is selling the best? If I offer 12 things and six of them sell good, focus on the ingredients that you need to get to sell the six things. You don't have to sell all 12. Having an inventory log is really a smart business idea. All right, next up, record of the commissary kitchen. So as you work from or are part of a home-based commissary kitchen, make sure you also keep a record of where that is at because potentially the health department could request that. If they come to inspect your vehicle at an event and they say, hey, I need to show, see papers from your commissary kitchen, are you guys caught up with that? Are you, are you up to date with that license or permit from the commissary kitchen or commercial kitchen? They're gonna wanna see that. 
Next up and lastly, create your social media accounts. Yes, you need to have a social media account. Like I mentioned before, you may not necessarily be part of e-commerce. You may not be selling online, but having social media will give your local patrons and customers the ability to take pictures and engage and interact with you on your platforms. And that only expands your brand awareness and allows your food truck to grow. Like I said, down the road, you may want to start selling merch. So if you have a Facebook page that's you know, 10,000 followers and you introduce a line of hats and different trinkets or products that have your logo and brand, you could be making a lot more money without having to worry about solely just your food truck revenue. So if you're looking to create a food truck business in Louisiana, this is a breakdown of some of the things you need to do, and a pretty good list actually of what is expected. And if you have questions about how to get your food truck up and running, let us know. And if you want to check out these videos here, these are additional resources you want to check out. Keep on watching. We've got a lot of great resources here on Food Truck Freaks.